Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I got another book review for you guys. I'm talking Joe Abercrombie's A Little Hatred. Uh, if you've watched the channel um, before, you uh, you know I love the First Law world, the First Law series, um, and I've been trying to get caught up uh, before Wisdom of Crowds comes out next week. And I, I finished uh, this book and I finished A Trouble with Peace, so I'm all caught up. I'm just waiting for uh, the Wisdom of Crowds, and I cannot wait. I am so, so, so excited. So, now, I finished this book, gosh, a month ago, something like that. It's just taking me a while to kind of get to this review. Um, I'm trying to get all the reviews out before Wisdom of Crowd comes, so I'm going to be doing this one, and then I'm going to do A Trouble with Peace here pretty soon, too. And since I've already read that one, I'm going to try to make sh I'm going to try to, like, make sure I don't mix up what happened in what book. I'm pretty sure I remember kind of where this one left off and where that one started, but... Um, yeah, I kind of just read them all the way through, and they're kind of blurring together in my head. Anyway, this book was awesome. Like, every single entry in this series is, like, better than the one before it. Like, Joe Abercrombie's writing is just improved so much. And, like, like The Blade itself is incredible, and the first trilogy is incredible. But, like, like I said, every single book that he puts out is just, is just better and more, and, like, better crafted and better paced and the characters are more en engaging and i just love joe abercrombie he's amazing so anyway a little hatred uh what is this one about so this is a beginning of a new trilogy i guess the age of madness so it's set like you know 30 ish years um after the events of the um original trilogy so the last argument of kings this is like 30 years later and so we've got like all new kind of POV characters, all new cast. A lot of them are the children of people that were in the original trilogy or uh, people that were in the standalones or whatever. Um, so it's really cool in that way. Like if you've read, I, if you've read the original trilogy, then you kind of get a lot of the context and like who these people are and why they're important. I will say too, if you haven't read the original trilogy, you 100% need to before you read this. Like, absolutely, it's, like, essential. I think you probably could read this book, but you'll miss a lot of what's going on and why these people are doing what they're doing and, and everything. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you read the First Law trilogy. And then I also think... Um, the standalones aren't necessary, but they're pretty much necessary. Like, you need to read those as well. And you know what? If you if by then you aren't, like, completely sold on this series, then I don't know. Maybe it's probably just not for you, but it's, ugh, I mean, it's incredible. So as with, you know, every single book in this series, uh, the characters are really what shines through the most. Uh, they're all just so well-drawn and, like, relatable and... Like, you understand why they're doing what they're doing. You maybe don't agree with what they're doing. They're not necessarily good people. But they're just great characters that you can, like, really, really root for. And um, there's no, like, good guys, bad guys. So, like, you're, it's weird. You don't really have, like, a side. Like, you're just seeing what's going on with these people. And, like, and you're just, like, wondering what's going to happen next. So this in this book, there's like four, I guess, kind of main characters. Um, you got Savine Dan Glockta. She is the daughter of R.D. and uh, Sand Dan Glockta um, from the original trilogy. Uh, you got Leo Dan Brock, who is Finry Dan Brock's son. He's up in the north, you know, doing his thing. You got Orso Dan Luther, uh, son of Jazal the King. And then you've got Ricky, who is uh, the daughter of the Dog Man, and she's up north too. So um, you got all these characters, and they're all kind of doing their own thing, but their their storylines like intertwine. Like this is a very like political uh, story where each of the different people, like their actions, are affecting the other people in the story, and um, like how those relationships play out is where all of the like tension and drama comes from and it's awesome the the world of the first law is uh is is transitioning into like kind of an industrial revolution type of an age they're like inventing you know steam power 
and using coal machine like powered machines for manufacturing and things like that so there's like a lot of transition happening in the society around workers and stuff there's like a there's a common like saying that like um when or like i guess it's kind of a marketing term when they're like proposing these new things it's like oh these machines can do the work of 10 men and then and you only need one person to run the machine and then everyone's like well what happens to the other nine workers and so that's like part of it like like how does society deal with like this all these all these people that are out of work kind of the main crux of the story at least in this one it's a lot of just setting up the new characters introducing them um savine is this like really like tactful kind of ruthless like investor so she like goes she goes around and she sets up different ma manufacturers and like she's like a businesswoman so she she like manipulates people into deals with her so that she can make money she's very very wealthy she's in like the upper echelons of like the social order like she hangs out with all the rich people and like goes to all the parties and she's very beautiful and she has a relationship with orso the prince and he's kind of like this like playboy he does drugs he's drunk all the time he he has sex with prostitutes all the time like he just doesn't take his life very seriously and he's not very ambitious and he doesn't really give a shit about anything he's been like given everything he's ever wanted like he hasn't he's never had to want for anything because he's the prince he's kind of lost and doesn't really know what he wants or what he's doing leo is in the north he is uh he's part of the angland army um and he is like protecting there's like this section of the north called the protectorate where the dogman is put in place to kind of govern that area it's technically part of the union but it's also like part of the north so um he's there with the anglanders and they're like kind of helping him govern and protect that area and then ricky is a northerner she's dogman's son she she hangs out with with leo up there and like stuff she's also got like she has seizures and stuff and then while she's having her fits she can like see she has like prophetic sort of dreams or whatever um so she's a really interesting character but anyway basically what happens is you know the people that live in the protectorate are at war with the northerners so you got you got black calder and then his son or his brother scale and then his son stour nightfall um and they're they're like the northern sort of faction warring with the Anglanders. So there's that war going on. All the while, there is civil unrest in Adjua. Um, there's a city called Valbeck where a lot of manufacturing and stuff goes on. There's like a workers' uprising that happens that is just awesome. So that's kind of what's going on politically and like how all this stuff works together is it's just it's just awesome. Um, and it sets up the next book just so beautifully and I'll, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that review out here in the next couple days. So I'll talk about that in a later video, but I just, uh, like I said, these books just keep getting better and better. And I, I just can't wait to see what happens in the next one. So, um, if you haven't, if you haven't read the first law yet, do yourself a favor and, and find those books and pick them up because they are just so, so good read them all and then you know when you get to this one let me know what you think because it's it's one of my favorite books that i've read this year so far yeah five out of five five out of five anyway that's all i got to say about that so yeah thanks for watching um like i said stay tuned for the uh trouble with peace review it should be coming hopefully in the next few days and then um when the wisdom of crowds comes out i will read it and i will share my thoughts with you and then, you know, it's kind of an end of an era. I'll be kind of sad with the, when the first law is over um, or done with. It sounds like, as far as I know, Joe Abercrombie doesn't plan on writing more first law, at least not in the near future. He's, from from what I've heard in interviews and stuff, um, he's working on something, something totally different, something totally new, which uh, I will 100% read. Um, but it is kind of sad to know that uh, the first law is, is going to be done.
I'll just have to reread it, I guess. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.